you doing up there? What the hell are you doing up there? Nice day out. Someone didn't have a good day. Gentlemen. I see you're here. Z1 on his way. Haven't seen him. And I think that's him. I must have set my comms to be a bit more broad than I... Oh wait, I remember why I had them set to broad. I mean that way now, though. Keep mine like that Anyways. most of the time. Oh.
Well, anyways. We have a few things we need to discuss. First of all... That ship we saw at the asteroid base. Which one? There was like four. The T-shaped one. Yeah, the T-1. Ah. Yeah. This one. Yep. You know, we still don't have much intel on this thing. Whatever it is, mm. it has to have been built recently, because there's nothing out about it. Yeah, okay, I can do that. Huh. Well, we got our visual recordings so far. And something we can glean just from looking at visual scans. It has... It has a uh, heavy payload torpedo launcher along with... I'd say four laser cannons. Yeah. Hmm. And you've already seen how fast that thing is. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, they've made a very odd choice here. From what I can tell, they have the cockpit sitting on a gyroscopic system yeah. relative to the rest of the craft. In other words, the craft is supposed to... It seems like... The best I can guess is that the craft is supposed to... Uh, sure. Should you, uh, delete the, the, or turn off the hollow projector or something? Well, I imagine Intel dug something up about this thing, so I'll let them, uh, talk about it. Yeah, the best I can guess... If I'm right, and a gyroscopic system is Easy being used to lasers. rotate the craft around the cockpit, It'd be impressive. Very unconventional, but impressive. Makes sense, though. You don't want to go fly sideways to the craft. I mean, why T's do that? Am I coming to? Yeah. Yep, we got you. What do you got for us? Since I saw you have picked up this, I thought he would butt in with my own theories and the rest of Intel's beliefs. This looks to be a next generation expensive elite pilot ship. From the looks of it, this thing is absurd to pilot. Due to the gyro rotating cockpit, the S foils rotating the entire position of the ship, and not to mention the oddity of the laser placement. Yeah, this thing's an oddball, to be sure. It's effective, though. That's the issue we have. We have no clue who's manufacturing. This is not of Incom design. So we don't know how the Alliance made this. We're suspecting some Corellian or Montalmari engineers pop this up. It could be possible. Other than that, the only other theory is this thing might be piloted by a droid. Hmm. That would kind of The laser sense. components are pretty good. I did notice it has a proton torpedo slot and it has a decent hyperdrive for its small size. Fast speed, maneuverable, and able to squeeze through many areas that most ships cannot, as it's low profile. The ship is a remarkable design, and it's something we would envy to own. Yep. The only other thing I can say about it is, personally, its landing pad is lacking. It, it doesn't have any sort of true shock absorption in this landing pad.
Also, the front does not have any sort of plating for um, crash landings. If this thing crashes, it breaks into a million pieces. Hmm. Most ships have a crumple cockpit, meaning the pilot itself can be saved or ejected. I don't see any way for a pilot to eject out of this thing. They die on impact. Yeah, Goes unless against the this rebel thing... survivability. Unless this thing surprises yet again and the cockpit just launches out of this thing like a speeding bullet. I wouldn't think... I don't see room for an engine on that thing. If you're going fast enough, you wouldn't need an engine. Well, yeah, but then stopping would become the issue. How do you, yeah, how do, you, how do you stop it? I mean, the only way to truly save yourself is if you are on over a body of water. And even then, it'd have to be deeper than your landing impact. From the looks of it, this looks to be a strike force. Fighter, it looks to be a hit and run. They just drop in a few of these and then they drop them out before reaction time of the enemy. They're at, without their S foils locked, they are on par with an X Wing, it seems. So they're just a better X Wing. They are a better, more expensive. They're, they're significantly better than X Wings. However, their design leaves things to be desired. Primarily, the engines are in a singular area. The guns are, what I'd say, too spread out. At least with an accuracy, and it's proton torpedo launchers from one of its uh, prongs as well. Unusual design. It could be meant to bust larger targets, hence the hit and run specification. The thing is meant to fight on frigates, at least. It's not for fighter combat. Yeah. It definitely can be used for it when it has a more favorable use against larger targets. In uh, yeah, but... either strafe runs or direct on assault. Yeah, that's what I noticed with this thing, is uh, while it was good at avoiding our attacks, it didn't seem very good at dishing out damage in return. We were able to avoid it pretty easily. I'm just curious how many they put in the squad. Three, five, eight? Yeah. Probably like five. Yeah, the only, we only encountered the five. one at the base. White wings are in three. This is a hybrid between a fighter and bomber, though, so... This could be a three or five. Could be possible. That's all I have to report. Cool. Alright, carry on. Alright, let's get this... Let's get this thing off the screen. Now, next. our next topic is Prospect. From reports I've received on Nora, among other issues, apparently the Rebels have begun to develop a presence on the planet. They've joined forces when with the bandit groups. Them. As soon as we get more sightings. By the way, have either yeah. of you known a brick in the past? I vaguely remember them, but have either of you remembered them? One second. I, I can okay. barely remember. I think like, he was a week. at the that other town that we have briefly. Oh, yeah, Nothing that probably makes bit. sense. Yeah. Well, either way, yeah. he's being removed from active service effective immediately. <laughs> I heard he almost single-handedly barely jeopardized our negotiations with the Empire. We were in the middle of our talks, too, when suddenly I got a report that this guy just started killing stormtroopers 
over something stupid like a sandwich or something. Okay. Yeah, Nora was talking my ear off about that one. It was a shame, too. That was supposed to be her first command assignment, but... Apparently, uh, I didn't pick the best team for her. Clearly. Also, apparently Veshka, uh, Saber, apparently, uh, Veshka isn't doing the best job down there. That's another thing I got a report of. He basically spends most of his time drinking. Yeah, he Ooh. told me. But he also told me he's yeah. planning on converting the rest of his alcohol into Molotov cocktails. Oh, well, that's good at least. By the way, the uh, What? By the way, apparently, uh... His lack of commitment to his job was like... was, um... Named as a big issue, um, in terms of... Oh, I just can't talk to... I can never talk during these things. Well, anyways, yeah, there was a big issue that took place. Something along the lines of... Both sides being infiltrated, and... He had no idea who was who, because... He had no personal relationship or professional relationship with any of his co-workers. At least that's the report I got. Oh, he told me one thing. That he thinks one of the people who infiltrated his faction was one of the people who knew him the most there. Hmm. Huh. Because they called him by name and knew about what he's been doing. It could also have been an issue of defection. Yeah, that too. Anyways, actually, I got the report on Brick right here. He gave the Imperials a faked ID, a sand ID from Tatooine or something. He caused major issues during a discussion with an Imperial Exploration Group. He... He resisted, um, being detained to the point that they got fed up and shot him. Again, over a sandwich or something. And then... He started tackling and beating the the exploration group's commanding officer when he had his back turned for a discussion. Wait. Didn't... Weren't those guys trying to arrest them? Vesh told me imps tried to arrest him when he greeted them. Yeah, that was the report I was getting. Um, basically, the Imperials who had come there didn't exactly know about our alliance. The procedure that was, at least, yeah, the procedure was, in theory, to, you know, let things go the way they were supposed to go, and get the message to people upstairs, everyone talks it out, and then we can sort everything out. But no. This brick guy ended up pissing off the group so much that it ended up coming to blows, and... Mm. I got that report on my desk in the middle of me talking to the Imperial representative in the area. Okay, so why was this guy allowed to do anything? He hadn't done anything like that before, that's the thing. I don't know what drove him to be like this now, but... It ended up costing us uh, a couple thousand cred because I had to pay. We had to pay for um, destroyed Imperial hardware in that fight. Hmm. Update: The Chimera has left our sector. Oh, all right. Yeah, they've been hovering there for a while. 
It makes sense. It's a long journey to and back. They're they're going into the unknown regions though. Oh well, that's a long journey in its own right. <laughs> Anyways, that brings us to the main point of this meeting. We're ready to begin the attack on the droid factory in Hypori. Okay. okay. That's cool. Uh, well, you guys don't sound very excited. Well, I just yeah, got another you information. Me in the middle of a meeting. Emil has That's been great. promoted to High Admiral. I, I'm telling you, we should have shot him when we had the chance. Yeah, he's left us alone. Yeah, and besides, he if we just shot him, someone else probably will have come to replace him. If he comes back, and we're able to, we'll kill him. Fuck him. I'm not dealing Why? with that fuck shit again. Greetings, everyone. I am here with your briefing report for the high terror re reconnaissance. It did right, not yield much. The facility seems to be guarded by several force field gates, an orbital shield, and some other arrays. We've already been tasked with eliminating it. We've already dispatched two squads to disable most of their weaponry. So you should have a safe entry into the facility. All they right, will be good. on a somewhat of an alert phase the second you land. The issue is, on the inside, we have no knowledge. However, we have reports that we did see HMPs in the air. Hmm. So, so I got think we can distinguish... Life. Yes. These seem to be higher shield grade variants. Higher grade variants. Alright, well, I'll be shooting those down. Advising you take the Valiant over there. That sounds good. A lot of preparation's been going into that thing lately anyway. Might as well give it its rounds. Ooh, ooh, do they have a small fleet that I can blow up? We did detect a single large vessel above in orbit. We do not know what yes. it is. Fuck there yeah. might be multiple in a cluster, and it was detected as one signature. We will double check that now. Please do. I want to use my my uh, captaining for once, even if I'm no longer the admiral. Scans reassigned, picking up at least three munificent class. All right, Dax. Can I have the go-ahead to take a strike forest over there and kill them all? Well, we're gonna be going in the Valiant, so we'll all be going there anyway. Pog, can I have Helm? I think you'll be more useful in, uh, Escort, or better yet, in one of the strike force ships. On the ground itself, the entire facility seems to be somewhat underground. Meaning, this thing could fall on top of you. We're not sure how the facility in the interior has decayed over the years. If it's well maintained or not. They have some sort of presence, but I don't know how much these maintenance droids can keep functional after 21 years. Well, we are unsure what seen. variants we'll run into in the inside. You could run in uh, everything from, uh, what's that, um... That guy in the same I, I don't remember his name. Doesn't matter he's either. His okay. old best friend. 
status? But uh, we're, we're thinking anything from the Cortosis battle droid all the way up to super tanks. Oh, that's fine. If this is a fortress garrison, expect heavy resistance. Electronic signature scanning of the inside has picked up at least 500 targets. That's a lot of droids. It could be we'll automation, though. Then. It could be yeah. machinery. However, at least 150 of them were moving when we did the electronic scan. Meaning they are actual droids. No organics were picked up inside the facility. Yeah, they must be going off their old orders, then. No, if you don't understand, that's even more unusual, because that means there's no bacterial or anything in there. There is no sign of organics inside this base. Meaning they could have a hostile atmosphere. Dax, I hmm. believe you should not come with us if that's the case. What are you talking about? I have a sealed suit. Sealed suit doesn't matter if there's a fucking bioweapon. Negative. It wouldn't be a bioweapon. It could just be a vacuum. Mm. Yeah. And also, what do you mean a sealed suit would do nothing against a bioweapon? There have been multiple... Unless it's acidic in nature. Yeah. yeah. This she should be fine. I yeah. doubt they're using acidic attacks, considering droids. Yeah, exactly. So we should be fine. Anyways, you got anything else for us? I do. The landing pad has been marked. Uh, it's your choice which vessel you can take. And your fleet complement, whatever you want to take, also is your choice. Alright. We also began reconnaissance on the Mustafar facility. Unlike that, this one, there seems to be no orbital fleet over it. Figures. I can't imagine anyone wanting to stick around that world for long. Class trash fire. What do you mean? It's a nice place. For, well, you. for a droid, maybe. I, I just used think to be specifically good. for me. When all the droid factories were operational, that place was a hell of a good place for scrap. However, the Empire has come and taken everything away, and now, you know, nothing remains. It is a rock. Yeah, but it's a rock with at least one more jewel in it. Expect to fight everything for B1s to probably B2s. Maybe even jump jet variants. We are concerned that these metaphysics might have jump jet B2s. So prepare for possible shipboarding. Alright. Is that it? I believe that will be it. Oh, I one last thing. They seem to not be employing vultures in this group. They seem to be mostly uh, deploying tri fighters and hyenas. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Which will be a, a disaster for our fighters. As you know, the strength of tries. Do you want me to just deal with them then? How? I mean, I can attempt. Shoot them. What the fuck else do you think? How are you going to single-handedly destroy me three munificents, their entire garrison, their entire not, fighting okay, force? Okay, not, not the fucking garrison munificent or anything. I'm talking just about the fighters. The fighters are garrisoned inside the munificents. And what is believed to be, getting scanned now, a support ship. One of those big, big droid spheres? Yeah. Okay, so that There's leaves us two, two munificents and a, and a support Three bubble? Three munificents and a support bubble. Meaning this right. thing can have up to 400 fighters in the field.
All right. Valiant crew is currently running war games in the scenario. They shall be prepped for the battle. Good thing. That's all. End of briefing. Cutting treasures. Great. Oh yeah, that will be underway shortly. Since this, yeah, since from what I'm hearing, this uh, underground facility is pretty well defended, what I'm thinking is we take one of the fast VTOLs, get in quick, in and out. Alright. Mm -hmm. Better than that. I think we're pretty much set with what we got. Any one of you, be prepared to have to come out into the field. Or, I mean, any one of you be prepared to come out into, uh, space. Yeah. And also be prepared for boardings. Because, uh, if we're fighting tri-fires, we're gonna need to be, uh... We're gonna need all the ace pilots we can get. I'm always prepared for anything. Good to hear. Is that up? Yep. Being dismissed. Go get your stuff ready. I'll let you know when we meet. Attention, Operation Plant is soon to begin. Remember your battle protocols and please refer to the Handbook of Operations. Reserves, please report to the Valiant and side vessels for defensive positions. Anyone else, mount up in fighters and get to ready to transport. This facility is likely well defended and while the main group, which includes the non-reserves and the veterans, siege the facility. We need the rest of you to secure anyone else who dares attack us during this time. We suspect we will be intercepted by a third party in this battle, as we'll be making a lot of noise. So please keep that in mind. Thank you. 
We leaving? Yep. Transport should be on their way. Hmm. There's our right. Mounts up, everyone. Voice system activated. If we keep our heads, we should be back here by dinner. Due to incompetence, we are down here now. Well, well, at least we're still in one piece. Yeah. I believe the Admiral wanted to speak to you. Alright, we'll up to the bridge. these right here. Oh, oh. Yeah, only one per, unfortunately. And I believe this is the spot, or, yeah. to bunks. Nope, we gotta go back down. <laughs> Too long since we've been on this old thing. Admiral. Ah, you arrived finally. I'm Admiral Luth. By the way, nice to meet you Howdy. all in person. Captain? Yeah, nice to finally meet you too. Heard a lot about you. Hopefully they are good things. 
Well, I wouldn't have uh, approved you for the position if they weren't. Sorry for the uh, rough landing. It looks like the door controls malfunction. I'm not sure why. Oh, the door controls were malfunctioning on this thing back in the Clone Wars. I see. So, you are going to be the leading front of the operation? Just you three? Guess. Yep. One might refer to as the AT. Pretty much. Alright. Seems like most of the uh, forces are going to have their hands full dealing with the uh, surrounding defenses, so... Maybe best to have a well, small strike also, team like us go into up. the main front. Has the intelligence briefed you? Picked up consortium Maybe activity laser. on planet. So a large detachment is being deployed in case of a consortium attack. Ah, oh, good to know. This, this operation was going to be rather small. I mean, you weren't going to bring a fleet or anything. A small strike force could have bypassed the fleet above. Unfortunately, the consortium back makes it more of an issue, as the fleet might just be a consortium. It could be possible. So did you approve the fleet coffee month, I said? Never got word. Yeah, I have. Good. A1, I'm commandeering your piracy vessel for this battle. Mm. Vanguard will reimburse you for any and all damages. Yeah, I would have suggested something similar myself anyway. If we're fighting tri-fighters, we're gonna need some good anti-fighter screening. Correct. If only we had a few consulars under our command. Oh yeah. I haven't met a, uh, I haven't met a single separatist fire squad that could stand up to the screening of a consular. We would if we had more slave circuits, however that's a new technology. Uh, Not new, it, it was a uh, lost and abandoned in the Republic era. I'm sure you probably don't know about it, but it's what we used for our automation. We used to just use droids. Slave circuits, on the other hand, allow remote control of most things in a fleet. A fleet in the Republic used it and then magically disappeared, never to be seen again. It hasn't been seen in 20 years to 30 years. Oh, must have been before my time. Yeah, you wouldn't hear about it, I mean... I only found about... I didn't even know about it until I was told about the slave circuit. It was a new revolutionary design to have um, a new optimized fleet under our control. It allows us to have a much larger vessel fleet with a lot less people. Apparently with that fleet... Uh, it was 200 or like... 200... 250 dreadnoughts? Dreadnought class uh, cruisers. Uh, and it only needed like 2,200 people to man all of them due to the slave circuit. Interesting. Yes. You can imagine the power of that then. A dreadnought is a powerful vessel. If we could have 200 under our control with only 2,200 people. Imagine what we can do with just a few consulars. Oh, yeah. Well, thankfully, a couple of... Con hmm. I'm requesting formally some funding so we can acquisition some more ships. I'll look into that. That'd be good. Now luckily, then, our ground forces... Yeah, sure, we can depart. Luckily, our ground force is pretty much up to snuff right now, so... Yeah, my advisor has been recommending I start putting more resources into fleet construction. Attention. We'll begin flight protocol check, and begin takeoff to rendezvous point. One thing I like about this act, and that's because we've retrofitted it, we don't have this... This is a observation deck more than anything. 
The entirety of the crew command deck is down below in a central control area. My, I don't understand why they have it, their um, bridges be so protruding everywhere. I don't know why the Republic and the Imperials insist on that. I it's dumb. Yeah, they're meant to double as air traffic control towers for the aircraft capabilities. Alright, let's go.